everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be altering a pair of jeans. Yes, I'm finally sharing you guys my tutorial on how to alter an oversized pair of jeans. These pair of jeans are a size 34 men's and I'm typically a size 26. So I'm gonna be altering it quite a bit. So if you have a pair of jeans or your dad has a pair of jeans you want altered to fit you, you can go grab them from his closet and we're gonna jump on the sewing machine. I'm gonna tell you how you can make them really, really trendy and it's really, really easy. So our first step is we need to get rid of this waistband or not get rid of it, we just need to take it off. So I have my seam ripper here and I'm just gonna carefully seam rip all the way around the waistband until it's completely off. And then you're also gonna wanna seam rip the bottom of these little belt loops. And if you do have like a Levi's patch or any type of patch here, you're also gonna wanna seam rip this completely off as well. There's like plastic in here, what the heck? Oh, it's the tag. That makes sense. That makes sense. So now my pants look like this and I have the whole strap here. So now I'm gonna put these on. So now I have my pants on, but you can see they are way too big. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to start pleating them. So I'm taking here right at the pocket and I'm just folding it over by pulling this fabric in so it looks like that. So I'm gonna go and put one clip on this side or you can also put a pin. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side where I'm just gonna push the fabric in Pull that over and I'm just going to clip it. So it looks like this so far. Once I have that, I can go ahead and adjust them to make sure they are even so this side looks a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna adjust it a tad. So now they fit like this, they fit good. I'm gonna take them off now. And when you put the waistband on, it will actually, you can tighten it a little bit. So just make sure they fit nice and comfy here. So now that I have my pants here, I went ahead and I measured from here to here to make sure they were even on both sides so they're even now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a straight stitch right here. I'm just gonna lock it down here because you can see the pocket here is folded on the inside. So I'm just doing a straight stitch just to keep that secure for when I sew back on the waistband. I also switched my thread to a denim thread and switched my needle to a 16 needle. Hopefully that will work. That's what my manual says to use a 14 to 18 needle. For denim, you definitely want to use a heavier duty needle for any denim that you're working with. And here is what the stitch looks like on this side and what it looks like over here. So now that our pants look like this, we have to fix this pocket here because you can see it's just like very open. It's not a very nice pocket. So what I like to do for the pocket is I like to create a pleat in the front here. So what I do is I fold it over and then it kind of creates a pleat. So I'm just gonna lay this down, have it all nice and flat and create that pleat. So for the pleat, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take a clip or a pin and you're gonna fold the outside of the pocket inwards and then you're also gonna line up the stitching there so it looks like you didn't do anything. And you also wanna make sure the inside of the pocket also lines up with the front and then it should look like this when you're done. So this is what your pants should look like. You should just see two small pleats here and other than that, you really don't see any alterations. So now I'm gonna sew them. Okay, so now for the most difficult part of this whole thrift flip, trying to get the fabric underneath the foot and the needle right here. It's a little difficult, but once you finally get it lined up and in there, it's a breeze. It's just very difficult to get the first stitch in there. So once I had it lined up, I started stitching. I started with the back stitch and then just carried on until I got to the end of the pocket. You see, you kind of have to readjust the pocket as you're going and then you can just do a back stitch at the end and that will be enough to hold it. You're gonna do it along both of the seams there. You see that there's two seams. I did the one closer to the top of the pocket first and then I'm doing the second one after. And just having those two in there, it will, it will be enough to keep the pocket nice and sturdy, especially with this heavy duty thread. And then this is what your seam should look like. So this is how the pair of pants look so far. They fit really good. They are not falling down anymore. 
and I'm really happy with how they look. I really like just this little pleat here. It doesn't really look like we altered them at all just because I lined up the pocket. The pocket is still fully functional. And up here, you can't even notice because we folded it behind the pocket. So up close, this is what they look like so far. But now all that's left is to add the waistband here. So if we put the waistband on, you're gonna see it's like way too long because obviously it fits a 34 waist. So if I line it up perfectly how it's supposed to be, you can see it's it's too big. And I actually like this, so that's why I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna alter the waistband at all. I am just gonna pin it on here. And then with this excess, I'm actually gonna put it down here. So it kind of has like a little bit of a crossover. I like that look. You could go ahead and trim it here and add a new button and you could shorten it so it fit, but I really like the length of this waistband, so I'm, I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna work with it. So if you're wanting your waistband not to overlap and you want it to look like a regular pair of jeans, all you really have to do is you actually have to cut off a little bit, so you wanna measure and then you wanna cut off this excess and then finish it, and then you're gonna notice, hey, this button's gone. So you're gonna need to get these, these extra buttons. And you're also gonna need it for the way I'm doing it, so you're gonna need these either way. So you're gonna need these ones. I <laughs> purchased them from Walmart. You can get them anywhere, and they're super easy to apply. So once you have it the right length, then you just go ahead and put a new button on, and then you sew your waistband on like normal, and then there you go, your pants are altered. But I'm doing it a bit different. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start pinning this waistband back on. So if you look at the front zipper here, we're gonna wanna attach the button, the end with the button on there, and we are gonna open it up like so, and we're just gonna put it on top so this pant goes in the middle of it. And you're wanna gonna tuck it right to the end, and then once you get it tucked in there, you can go ahead, clip it, or attach a pin, and then you're gonna continue to put this pair of pants inside the waistband all the way around. So for the waistband, I already explained it, but I'm showing you here me putting the waistband on. I'm being as careful as possible just because you don't want any lumps, you don't want it being all wavy. You want it to sit nicely when you're pinning it to the pair of jeans, just so it's a lot easier when you go and sew it on. So just be careful with this, add a whole bunch of pins, add as many pins as you want. And then when you get to the end of the waistband, you're gonna see there's a whole bunch of extra waistband there. And what I did, I kinda angled it downwards so the end of the waistband would not overlap the beginning of the waistband it would kind of go down towards the pocket so I did that and then I also went ahead and I trimmed a tiny tiny bit of the jean there not the zipper just the top of it so don't cut the zipper and then that gave it a little bit more of a steeper angle so then I went and pinned it and then after doing that I jumped onto my sewing machine so now for sewing it on. I started where the button is and then I went all the way around the waistband. And some tips for this is you definitely wanna go very slow, go very slow. And you can also pull the waistband where you pull one end and the other end. And then that will also kind of flatten it out. That's what I kind of did and that kind of worked for me just because you can see the waistband's a little wavy in parts. So I just tried to keep it as flat as possible and I also went very, very slow. It doesn't look like I'm going slow, but I did go so, just trust me. It looks like I'm not going slow, but I did. I wanted the stitch to look pretty just because it's on the outside of the pants, it's at the waistband, so I wanted this to be pristine. And then when I got close to the zipper, you can see I stopped right before the zipper, back stitch, I took it off, and then I started from the other side of the waistband, and then I sewed all the way close to the zipper again, and then I did a back stitch and I just left that little extra zipper just because I did have the waistband overlapping the zipper just a tiny bit. So I just left a little excess room because I did not want to break a needle and I didn't want to stitch over the zipper. And now for the patch. For the patch, I measured or kind of just tested it out and just guesstimated which stitch length I needed to use. I wanted to match it up with the last stitch length and it came out to I think three worked for mine so the needle would land in each hole so I wasn't actually puncturing any new holes into this patch just because I thought it could probably rip off if I'm putting a whole bunch of new holes in. So figure out what length you need to use so the hole lines up with the needle. Mine I believe was a three for the stitch length. 
So this is how the jeans look so far. I'm happy with them. They fit really nice. So now we can go ahead and finish it. So you see I have this little strap here. Well, we got to put a new button here so it can attach and it can look like that. So now I'm going to take the strap here and I'm just going to pull it snug and then I'm going to pull this snug as well. And I'm just going to find a place where I want to put the button. I think I want to put the button here along the pocket so it will look like that. So I'm just taking my marker and I am just putting a little dot in the center of the hole here. And you can see I put it there and that is where I'm going to put the button. And make sure when you are making these pants that you're wearing a pair of pants that you can get in and out very easily because you'll be changing in and out of these pants like 500 times. So now we're gonna attach a button. And the button I have, these are just from Walmart. It comes in a pack of eight and it's amazing because you don't have to have any machinery, you just need a hammer and that's how you attach these buttons. They're honestly a lifesaver just even to alter your jeans and put an extra button so you can like tighten a bit. They're amazing. They're like a few dollars from Walmart. So go get a package of these and then you probably have a hammer at home and then you'll also need your favorite book, which I don't know if this is my favorite book. I'm just finishing it, you can see. So don't judge me in the comments. Yes, I'm rereading Twilight for like the second time. So to attach this button, there is instructions with the kit and usually they should come instructions, but I'm just gonna show you. You take this and you have to put it through the denim like a little bit and usually I can never just push it through. So I usually take my seam ripper. It is, oh, here it is. I take my seam ripper here and where the hole is, I just go ahead and I just put it in and try to make a little hole. Like not too big, like just make a little one just so it can fit through the little sharp metal piece. I'm sorry, I don't know the terminology of any of these pieces. There. Do you see, it's poking through and then the back should look like the other backings. So now that I have this poking through, I can take the other side of the button, so the front side of the button, and I can just kind of push it on just a tad, or not really, I'm trying to get it on so it just stays there a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna hammer it on. So now to attach the button, we're just gonna have the book here. We're gonna have the button right here, and you're gonna put it down on the book, and then you're gonna take the sharp piece of the button thing, and you're just gonna put it inside end at the front of the button and you're just gonna hold it there because now we are gonna hammer this part with our hammer. And there you go. You can see it's attached there. It's pretty snug. This is what it looks like on the front and it's that simple. And the very last step of finishing these pants are these dang belt loops. Like, you don't really need them, but I'm just gonna keep them on just for, you know, aesthetics. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna seam rip this one just because this one just kind of dangles, but you can keep it on if you want. But all of these ones here, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew them down quickly. I just sewed on the belt loops and the jeans are finally done, but I wanted to mention something before I showed you the final result. I was struggling just a little bit with the belt loops because they were so thick my sewing machine was like no so i ended up just trimming them a little bit and sewing them on so i wasn't sewing through two layers of denim just one and my sewing machine liked that much better so you can either just trim it a bit and sew it that way or you can just take the belt loops off completely if you don't want to sew them on because you don't really need belt loops because the pants are made for you so they already fit you in the way so Whatever you like, I kept them on just for aesthetic, but you don't really need them. Okay, but that's it about belt loops, so let me show you how they turned out. They are very comfy. They are very, very comfy pair of pants, and I'm all about comfy pair of pants. When I have something that's not as comfortable in my closet, I just never wear it. So now I'm starting to make all my clothes comfy clothes, because then I'll actually wear it. But you can see, they fit pretty dang good. They're like a nice oversized boyfriend leg, but then they're nice and high-waisted here, so they fit nice to the waist, and I'm, I don't know what else to say. I'm just very happy with how they turned out. 
I love the color of these jeans. I got them in the men's section at the thrift store for like six or seven dollars. So these pair of jeans cost me like six or seven dollars. And six or seven dollars for a boyfriend fit jean nowadays is very, very good. And here's an up close look of how they look at the waist and the booty. Not much different from how they looked before, but they look great. Well, that's it. That's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoy today's thrift flip. I hope you guys are gonna try it out, hopefully with your dad's pair of jeans and make them fit. And then you can show them like, hey dad, I used your favorite pair of jeans, but now they're my favorite jeans. Maybe try that out, maybe not. Maybe just go to the thrift store and find a cheap pair of jeans in the men's section, whichever. Whichever. I found these at the thrift store. You can get them from pretty much anywhere from your dad's closet to, I guess, Walmart. Yeah, Walmart, you can get them there too. Although I don't recommend. I recommend just going to the thrift store. But other than that, that's it. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's thrift flip. I put out a new thrift flip slash sew with me every single week on my channel and I also do a thrift with me every single Sunday. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see a new sew with me and thrift with me every single week. But other than that, that's it for today. So I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and I'll see you guys on Sunday for a new thrift with me. Bye guys.